Right now, law enforcement searching for a motive behind the deadly parade shootings in Highland Park, Illinois, as we are learning more about the victims. And the mayor of Akron, Ohio, declaring a state of emergency as protests, de protesters demand justice for an unarmed man police shot and killed. And an alert day in the forecast, right, Julian? That's right, it's an alert day. We're going to be talking about high heat and some storms on the way. Make sure you tune in. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for joining us yesterday. It was severe thunderstorms. Today, it's the heat. An alert day is now in effect. Let's head back to the Weather Center. Julian has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. That's right. As Marcus said, we had an alert day in the forecast for us for today, and that's because we have two things we got to discuss for us. It's going to be hot, and it is going to be stormy conditions to be rolling in for us as we get into the late evening closer towards tonight. As you can see for our high heat, what well, we're looking at potentially seeing heat index readings pushing into the triple digits, the mid triple digits, and severe storms. We could be seeing high winds, hail, and heavy rain to be possible for us as we continue throughout the rest of the evening. But until then, this is what we're seeing as of right now. Cloud cover is blanketing Madison as we're going into our noon hour. In current conditions, well, we're at 83 degrees, but take notes at those dew points. 74 degrees just goes to explain how really sticky and muggy it truly is outside right now. Looking at our heat indices, especially towards the west, we can see triple digits already for Platteville and into those 90s for areas just west of Dane County as we're going into our evening. Now, as we take a look right now, it's quiet for us, even though it's muggy and cloudy, but we can see storms firing off to our friends over into the Dakotas. And for us, well, we also are in that slight risk for potentially seeing severe weather, but the moderate and even the enhanced risk is to our friends over towards Minnesota, Iowa, and the Dakotas as well. So we're going to be missing that, but we still have a good shot of seeing some storms firing off later on. We'll talk more about that in detail in just a few moments. Until then, let's talk about you, Mark. All right, Julian, thank you. Thank you. But we do believe Cremo pre-planned this attack for several weeks. Uh, he brought a high-powered rifle to this parade. He accessed the roof of a business via a fire escape ladder and began opening fire on the innocent Independence Day celebration goers. The rifle was purchased in Illinois, and the information we have thus far is that it appears to have been purchased legally by Cremo. We are learning new details about the person of interest in the Highland Park Parade shooting. According to authorities, Robert Cremo III had been planning the attack for weeks. During the shooting, Cremo dressed as a woman and was able to run away by acting like a parade goer in the chaos. The gun used in the shooting was bought legally, as we just heard. Police in Highland Park, Illinois, that's about 30 minutes north of Chicago, are trying to determine a motive for the gunfire unleashed on a crowd of spectators at a July 4th parade. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more from Highland Park. Crowds celebrating America's freedom instead confronted terror at the Highland Park 4th of July parade. Monday, a gunman perched on a rooftop killed six people and wounded more than two dozen others. Revelers tried to hide or flee, leaving behind lawn chairs and lollipops. You feel like you're just going to get shot when you're running away and it's just horrible to see all that terror. The shooting was very rapid and well, seemed to be a lot of it. Anesthesiologist Wendy Rush was at the parade. She says she helped one of the victims who later died. At the hospital, I, I've had deaths on the table. I've had, you know, I've, I've seen, I've seen death, and at least I, I, I can understand that. I know why it happened. Um, but, but here I can't understand just the senseless taking of a life. Police arrested 21-year-old Robert Cremo III, described as a person of interest. Authorities say Cremo posted violent videos and imagery on social media. This individual uh, is believed to have been responsible for what happened. Police recovered the rifle allegedly used in the attack. Like the mass shootings in Uvalde and Buffalo, the mayor here says this weapon was legally obtained. We need to have a very real national conversation about why we're okay with allowing weapons of war on our streets. Highland Park okay. Mayor Nancy Rotering led yesterday's parade. She also has a past connection to Cremo. I was his Cub Scout pack leader. He was a little boy at the time. I'm not sure what happened uh, to him to compel him to commit this kind of evil in his hometown. The victims range in age from 8 to 85, including Nicholas Toledo, a grandfather visiting family, and Jackie Sundheim, who worked at a local synagogue. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Highland Park, Illinois. 
And turning to that trouble, police killing an unarmed black man in Akron, Ohio. The mayor has now declared a state of emergency. Protesters believe police body cam video released by the authorities fails to explain why eight officers opened fire, hitting Jalen Walker more than 60 times. Keith Taylor, a New York Police Department veteran, says it appears officers followed their training, but new protocols might be necessary. To the extent to which policies can be developed that will lessen the number of officers that are simultaneously utilizing lethal force, I think that would be better for all involved. Walk Walker sustained more than 60 wounds and was unarmed when he was killed. Police say a gun was later recovered from his car. It's unclear when or if additional body camera footage will be released. One person is dead, four others were wounded during a shooting in Kenosha last night. Police say the incident occurred around 10.20 p.m. Arriving officers found a chaotic scene with clear evidence of gunshots. The four surviving victims were taken to Milwaukee area hospitals. Information about the victims has not been released. No suspects are in custody and no motive is known. The investigation is ongoing. Here in Madison, police arrested a man yesterday who they say attacked a juvenile with a pole. Officers were sent to the McDonald's location in the 6900 block of Odana Road just before 1040 p.m. A caller said that a man was attacking people in the parking lot with a pole or hockey stick. A second caller, a juvenile, said that he and his friends confronted the suspect while he was sitting in a vehicle. The suspect allegedly hit a member of the group in the face with a pole, causing a minor injury. He was arrested and faces charges of battery, disorderly conduct while armed, felony bail jumping, physical abuse to a child, and resisting. Happening today, the man accused of killing his mother and dog at their Iowa County home will be in court for the beginning of his trial. Sean Pickett allegedly told investigators in May of last year he was possessed by evil voices and blacked out before killing his mother and dog. He was able to tell investigators graphic details on how he killed both. Police responded to the home after Pickett himself called saying his mother and dog were dead. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Another record-breaking weekend for holiday travel. We'll take a closer look at the numbers after the break. Memories matter. I think the biggest thing I got out of my service in Vietnam was a real sense of patriotism. I'm very proud of what I did. I fought for you, and I'd fight for you again. This 4th of July, we remember, and we never forget those who sacrificed everything for our freedoms. We are Crest Funeral and Cremation Service, and we know that your memories matter. GTW is different from the competition because we bring three offices at once to one case. A team of excellent lawyers from around the state to bring justice for the needs of our clients. All in to win. Jim Grass, Thompson and Walks. Is your home just as hot inside as it is outside? The problem might be your walls have no insulation or ineffective builder's grade insulation letting all that heat in. But when USA Insulation wraps your home in our premium injection foam, we turn your home into a cooler, keeping the heat outside and your cool, comfortable air inside, right where it belongs, and helping you save on rising electric bills. And right now, when we foam your walls, we'll insulate your attic for free. USA Insulation. It's Terrific Tuesdays at hy V. This Tuesday, Chips Ahoy cookies, only $1.49. hy V orange juice or apple juice, only 99 cents. Two pounds of hy V shredded cheese, only $5.99. And basket and bushel blackberries, two for only $3. Tuesday only. And save even more during Red, White, and Fuel. Right now, save up to $5 per gallon with your hy V Fuel Saver Plus Perks card. And visit hy Deals.com for even more deals. Politicians have been threatening it. Now the Supreme Court's done it, triggering a ban on nearly all abortions in Wisconsin, even in cases of rape and incest. And Senator Ron Johnson sided with them on overturning Roe v. Wade, punishing doctors and hurting people, putting our health and reproductive rights in danger. Johnson even said, if you don't like it, you can move. Tell Senator Ron Johnson to protect us 
not punish us. Whether you have a design emergency or you just want to shop the best furniture showroom in town, you need dwellings. Madison's best kept secret for design and furniture. Shop our fabulous showroom. Hard Rock Road, Fitchburg. judge ruled in favor of three major U.S. drug distributors in a $2.5 billion lawsuit that accused them of causing an opioid health crisis in one West Virginia county. The suit said Amerisource Bergen Drug, Cardinal Health, and McKesson distributed tens of millions of pills in Cabell County over eight years. In his 184-page ruling, the judge wrote that opioid cases must be decided not based on sympathy, but on the facts and the law. U.S. breakfast food giant Kellogg loses a legal battle in Britain. Kellogg tried to block new anti-obesity measures, banning the promotion of sugary cereals. The rules are set to take effect in October. A high court judge rejected the company's argument that the regulations do not consider the nutritional value of milk added to cereal. And for the eighth year in a row, Chick-fil-A ranks as America's favorite fast food restaurant in a survey of more than 20,000 fast food customers. Sandwich chain Jimmy John's came in second on the American Customer Satisfaction Index. Domino's and KFC tied for third, while McDonald's finished in last place. But overall, the survey finds customers continue to prefer full service over fast food restaurants and the gap is widening and that is your cbs money watch report for more head to cbsmoneywatch.com at the cbs broadcast center i'm matt piper well, let's check wall street as trading begins for the week the dow industrial is down 514 points the nasdaq though up 10 the s p 500 down 56. tsa says it screened more than 11.2 million people over the holiday weekend, air travel peaked on Friday with nearly 2.5 million people screened. That's the highest figure since February of 2020. But those numbers came with a few headaches for travelers. FlightAware says more than 2,200 flights in the U.S. were canceled Thursday through Sunday. Next to noon, Pam Yankee is back with your latest egg numbers. Plus, Julian has more on a weather alert day for extreme heat after the break. The final week of Steinhoffel's biggest 4th of July sale ever. Save 35 to 75% store-wide. Plus, get great deals on hundreds of bonus buys in-store and online. Like this Queen Beautyrest mattress, only $3.99. This reclining sofa, just $4.99. A queen bed, now only $7.49. A five-piece dining set, now just $11.49. So hurry in and save big during the final week of Steinhoffel's biggest 4th of July sale ever. Relax, it's Steinhoffel's. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Donate today. Tired of millionaires in the Senate like Ron Johnson who only look out for the rich and powerful? Mandela Barnes will be a voice for hardworking middle-class families. As the son of a teacher and a third shift factory worker, he gets it. He'll make the big corporations and the rich pay their fair share and lower middle-class taxes to make things more affordable for us. Mandela Barnes knows it's about the middle class, not the millionaires. Courageous Leaders Pack Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. He has his grandfather's smile. Her mother's eyes. My cheekbones. But will she have my diabetes? My sickle cell anemia. His father's heart disease? Go to joinallofus.org to share your health information and speed up health research breakthroughs. The future of health begins with you. Many of us are guilty of it, but sometimes road rage can get the better of us. Tomorrow, we'll share some ways to stay calm behind the wheel. And when we could see more rain, tomorrow morning, we're breaking down the impacts and the timing right here from 4.30 to 7. News 3 Now is taking action, reaching out to our community to lend a helping hand. Taking action by teaming with our neighbors and local leaders to help make this amazing community we share a better place to live. Taking action for South Central Wisconsin. News 3 Now.
The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Let's check in now with Pam Mackey from the Midwest Farm Report. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Just in time for a hot, sticky day <laughs> like what we've got going on out there today. I had a bunch of people that were sending me pictures while I was out on break of uh, how their corn had surpassed the knee-high by 4th of July uh, phrase that we hear quite often this year. Of all years, I've seen a lot of corn that was uh, far above the waist for a lot of folks. So uh, hopefully it's going to continue to enjoy this uh, warm weather. And the rain that we picked up overnight is pretty good timing as well for a lot of the corn that's getting closer and closer closer to uh, growth stages where they need the rain. Everybody's talking about it today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is not the only place where we're seeing markets take a nosedive. Uh, the corn, the soybeans, uh, the wheat, in fact, soybeans are down almost a dollar a bushel right now in Chicago. Uh, I'm kind of concerned, obviously, as I would be with any kind of drastic drops that we're seeing. But one thing that you need to kind of keep in mind is there are still a lot of people that are on vacation uh, for the 4th of July event. And that means that that they probably have a lot of computers that are basically set up to do trading for them. So I can't say that I think this is a, a fundamental shift in the marketplace. I think it's maybe more of a technical situation that's going to have to be corrected kind of when people come back from their vacation. So I'm trying not to get too uh, drastic about these prices today, but they definitely are shocking. Don't want you to forget county fair seasons are underway. You know, one thing you can think about when you're headed to those county fairs, watch uh, some some of the evaluation that's going on, whether it's kids in the ring with their uh, larger animals or kids that are active with the smaller pets, make sure that you're kind of keeping an eye on the lessons that they're learning. It's not just about the animals. It's also about the lessons that those kids are learning. I'm going to be focusing in that, uh, my attention on that this summer myself. And don't forget next week, Wisconsin Farm Technology Day is happening. Today in Chicago, barrel cheese down four at 216 and a half. 40 pound block cheese down eight and three quarters on a Tuesday at a 208 and a half. Double butter drops seven cents today 294 a pound on the butter so it is just a lousy day all the way around in the marketplace from the dow jones industrial average right on through to our dairy complex like i said though mark you know as well as i do there's still a lot of people that are out on their fourth of july break so we'll wait and see if we can write the ship a little later this week yeah i think a lot of people take the whole week off yeah how was vegas Hot, but a different kind of hot. You know, the, how many how many times have people said it? But it's a dry heat. It's it's hot. I, it's I'm, it's hot. Every day was over a hundred. So. Oh my goodness! All right, well, <laughs> welcome back. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and we have a, a weather alert here for extreme heat today. Julian Seawright is over in the Weather Center with the latest. Julian. That's right. So we are going to be monitoring how hot it's going to get for us for today. But as we are around the noon hour, things aren't too toasty, but they definitely feel quite muggy as we are still dealing with pretty extensive dew points around southern Wisconsin. Outside of that, though, this evening and tonight is where we're also going to be shifting our focus for the looking of severe thunderstorms to be rolling into southern Wisconsin for us. But as of right now, the good news is, is that we are having a blanket of cloud cover. This is giving us two good reasons as to why. One, it is limiting how much heat we're actually having. And two, it's also going to be limiting the instability to be feeling severe storms for us. So that is good because our dew points are skyrocketing here in southern Wisconsin. A lot of moisture is in our atmosphere, as we can see plenty of 70s and even 81 degree dew points over towards Platteville. And that's also where we see the highest heat index that's right now. We're looking at triple digits for a couple of areas, but for the most part, we're all feeling quite muggy, but not as bad as we were hoping we would be around this time of day. But one thing we are going to be watching for is that now it is quiet, so we don't have to worry about the weather getting too out of hand as of right now here in the upper Midwest. However, we can see just our friends outside of the Dakotas, some storms are starting to fire off, and we are going to be monitoring that situation throughout the rest of today because we are still within a slight risk for southern Wisconsin to see. So storms starting to roll their way in, even though our friends over in into the Dakotas, Iowa, and for uh, Minnesota are within the enhanced and for the moderate risk for severe, seeing severe storms. So over onto the western side of the plains is where we're going to be looking at the biggest threat for severe weather. But for us, we still have that threat. But the good news is we're not looking for tornadoes to be expected for us, but any storms that do fire off, hail and winds that could be damaging for some areas are really going to be the main threats for us. Now, as we get into it, this is what we're going to be seeing for us. The storms themselves are going to be 
fueled by the stalled out front that has been really just setting here into the upper Midwest over the last couple of days, which has fueled severe storms from yesterday, which gave us three quarters of an inch of rain in Madison. And we're going to be looking and expecting a good amount of rainfall once again. As we get into the later part of today, just know the evening commute as of right now is looking pretty calm. However, we'll start to see some storms starting to fire off as we get into around dinner time today. We're looking for a first round of storms to start to fire themselves off and then go into the later part of our nights, but clearing off as we get into the early parts of tonight, which once again is good news. We're looking for a break as we get into our Wednesday morning and then heading into our Wednesday afternoon. We could potentially see another shot of seeing some rain for some areas, which we'll get into in just a moment. But until then, a quarter to one half an inch of rainfall is going to be expected with these storms. Of course, where thunderstorms are is where we're going to be looking at uh, heavier rainfall areas for those. But as we get into our Wednesday, this is what we're going to be watching for. More developments overnight and even into our Wednesday afternoon for some showers and storms to start to flow their way through uh, here in southern Wisconsin. But outside of that, we have a chance of seeing some showers or even some thunderstorms pretty much every day of this week. The good news is the heat is really just going to last for today. Then was we're going to top out for the next couple of days into the upper 70s and into the lower 80s. So that's the silver lining is that it's not going to get too hectic. And even for our severe storms, they're not looking to be overly strong especially as of right now with our setup having plenty of cloud cover and not a whole lot of heat. That's actually pretty good for us as of right now, Mark. Uh, but we still have to monitor the situation throughout the next few hours. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way. But yeah, you never know, it's weather. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> All right, Julian, thank you. Howard's in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen now, and he has something to give you a jump start after a holiday. I hope you had a good fourth. I know I did. On days like this, you know, after having a day off during the week, you may need something to give you a bit of a jump start. My recommendation is a smoothie bowl. It's easy to make, super colorful, and packed with goodness. The one I'm making today starts off like a traditional smoothie, since we add a bunch of fruit to our blender. Here I'm using frozen mango, raspberries, and strawberries. Starting with frozen fruit makes it so much better, since it makes it extra thick. To that, add in a sliced banana, some ice, almond or regular milk, and a bit of honey. We give it a whirl until everything is smooth. You may need to scrape down the sides to make sure everything gets mixed evenly. Then we pour this into a cereal bowl, and here comes the fun part. We top it with lots of fruit, nuts, and granola. You can even drizzle on some Greek yogurt. What a nice contrast to yesterday's 4th of July, eat until you're stuffed buffet. And not only is this refreshing, but it's also packed with antioxidants. It's low in fat, and it's filled with fiber. To get the recipe for our feel-good smoothie bowl, simply visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a very smooth way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Speaking of so good, at next at noon, Angie Edge from the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin will show us how to make an extra creamy and delicious dessert. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I've never been more ready in my life. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. <laughs> Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. We'll be there before you hang up the phone. After an accident, you have an important opportunity to go after all the money you may be entitled to. When it comes to motorcycle representation for accidents, only one firm comes to mind, UP and Abraham. They're very well known for handling motorcycle cases. We knew that we could trust them. They got me way more than I thought I would get. Bikers choose UP and Abraham because of the reputation of getting the best results of any other law firm. Call UP and Abraham right now. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Nebraska is kind of like that odd kid. Didn't say much in school. Slightly peculiar, maybe. But when we took the time to get to know him, turned out he was pretty interesting. We know some people won't take the time, but if you're someone who will, odds are you're gonna like it here. Nebraska. Honestly, 
It's not for everyone. It's Summerfest. Oh. So bring your I haven't heard live music in 27 months self, your festival food for lunch and dinner self, and your 12 stages in one day self. Yeah. Bring your best self to Summerfest, presented by American Family Insurance. Sometimes life can get pretty busy in an active household. So that's why Menards makes things just a little bit easier for you. Start a door design and choose a style that's right for you and everything else you look for in a quality door. Mastercraft offers fast, free delivery on personalized doors to any Menards store. Use our door designer on Menards.com to get your door your way. Mastercraft Doors, 11% off at Menards. Come take a relaxing two-hour vacation at the movies. You might want to lose the cucumbers. Are you ready to make junk disappear? I've never been more ready in my life. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. <laughs> oh. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. We'll be there before you hang up the phone. Welcome back. We're out on the patio with Angie Edge from the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. What a great day for ice cream. Yeah, and ice cream, you scream. And Julia's <laughs> going to help us here. We all scream for ice cream. It is National Ice Cream Month here in Wisconsin. As it should be. So we have a lot to celebrate, and it takes that high-quality Wisconsin milk to make a lot of ice cream here. We actually have over 37 locations that make ice cream here in Wisconsin. Oh, so not only are we the dairy state, but we're also the ice cream state as well. So and, you, and you have an ice cream maker there? I do have an ice cream maker, and today I made some key lime mascarpone ice cream sandwiches Ooh. from scratch. You so, did not. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I used my little handy dandy ice cream maker and started out with one and one half cups of a heavy whipping cream, a half and half from Sassy Cow, a local of creamery. Course. And then I also used one container of Crave Brothers mascarpone uh, cheese as well. Hmm. A little bit of sugar and a little bit of lime juice and some uh, fresh key lime squeezed in there as well. So you'll notice it has a very citrusy lime flavor. Can't wait for you guys to try them. Yeah. Is it hard to make? Not hard to make, especially if you plug it in and it takes about 15 <laughs> minutes to churn the ice cream. There oh, wow. are the uh, old-fashioned ones the too crank. where you can yeah. crank them yeah. by hand. But such a fun activity for your family, for your friends. Make your own homemade delicious ice cream. And and if you don't want to do that, of course. You can buy it. There's so many <laughs> local favorites right here in the Madison area. So we have, of course, Babcock right on uh, UW campus that you can find Wisconsin ice cream. Sassy Cow Chocolate Shop is another one right here in mm -hmm. Madison. Um, also Cedar Crest, Calliope, and Chips all right in the area. I've heard so. about Calliope. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so many great favorites right here Babcock. locally. You can't yeah. go wrong with any and, of them. Oh, really? <laughs> no, they're, all, they're all great. <laughs> yeah. We are have a rich, very rich culture yeah. around here with so ice cream. So it takes about 12 uh, pounds of uh, milk to make one pound of ice cream, one gallon of ice cream. Oh, so wow. Lots of our milk, farm fresh milk, goes into these uh, delicious ice creams and so many flavors as well. Yeah, that's, it's endless. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chocolate, yeah. strawberry, key lime, you name it. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to try yeah. these before they melt. And yeah. recipe online, of course. Recipes <laughs> online. And when you are shopping for local ice cream, look to see where it's made. And you can always find that proudly Wisconsin dairy or proudly Wisconsin cheese on it locally. So it's our already melting in this extreme heat. I uh, know. We've got a whole month to yeah. celebrate. So Ooh. very easy. Just put that um, homemade ice cream right between those graham Ooh. crackers. Uh, very delicious. You Perfect. can taste that rich mascarpone and cream right in oh, it. Right. It really tastes that key lime, too. Mm. <laughs> all right. Good ice cream eating weather. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be perfect weather to eat some ice cream. As we take a look at what we're seeing for the next 10 days, today is going to be the hottest day. Definitely enjoy your ice cream outside if you can before it melts, of course. But then for the rest of the week, we are looking at chances of seeing some storms. But, Mark, the good news is it's not going to be as hot. All right. That is good news. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.